everyone, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. It's episode 577. I'm Glenn, and it is the 29th of March, 2018. Happy Easter. Uh, whenever you listen to this, it might be over Easter uh, or after Easter. And uh, the Commonwealth Games are here on the Gold Coast. I'll give you a bit of a rundown on that shortly uh, for those that are interested and tell you all the things that we've got to put up with being locals while the games are just about 20 kilometres away. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to the show. We've got a this week, we've got heaps of stories we're going to get through and bring you all up to date, hopefully, on the stuff that you need to know that's been going on uh, with a, mainly, hopefully, any interesting stuff in, within Australia tech uh, that we th- deem to be interested in. We deem that you would be interested too, just like Steve Jobs, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, so welcome. Uh, you can see us on the, the facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. And thanks to everyone who's been subscribing to the YouTube channel too after after my plea to don't don't take our $2 away last week. Uh, yeah, quite a few of you have jumped on the YouTube and we need some more. So please, if you haven't subscribed, just jump on there and subscribe. I don't know if it'd be worth it, but hey, you get a nice little message every time we post a YouTube video and you never know, you might want to watch it one day. All right, we're also on the TuneIn Radio app, which is cross-platform, and you can get that uh, at uh, search up Aussie Tech Heads, or you can even search the Aussie Tech Radio uh, on the TuneIn Radio app, and that will give you other tech podcasts from Australia, wall-to-wall, back-to-back, new episodes every Friday. And that, and if you want to know more about that, it's the AussieTechRadio.com. All right, now we're on the Twitter, we're everywhere and all that sort of stuff and we are brought to you by ATH Web Hosting. Look, we've got this new thing, it's free with uh, with the Pro and Business Plan site pad. It's a drag and drop uh, website creator, just maybe just like the GoDaddy ones, but we couldn't afford ALF. So, uh, you know, it's just me telling you about it. So yeah, go and have a look at that. Uh, Aussie uh, support, SSL certificates, domain registration, easy install of wood, all that sort of stuff. All right, good stuff. Now, don't forget the other shows. The Aussie Mac Zone is going great gun. So, hi, Michael. He's, if you've seen Michael last week, he had an eye patch on with the Apple sticker over it. <laughs> One-eyed Apple supporter he is. Um, yeah, so I hope your eyes going all right. I think he had something cut out, cataract or something. So, uh, yeah, that'd be going all right. And uh, the Aussie Tech Crypto. And speaking of the Aussie Tech Crypto, we're going to ask Jace how that's going. I think he's up to episode 11. We'll get into who is here this week. We have Jace and Jordan as usual. Who are we up first? Oh, we've got Jordan first. Hello, Jordan. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Good. <clears throat> I'm good. good. That's good. Been all over the countryside lately. Oh, yeah, singing. Doing a lot of driving around, so I'm a bit worn out. Oh, yeah? Well, just from gig to gig? Gig to gig, but I'm also... I've been delivering... Um, cool rooms to help my cousin out he, he's a cool room hire you know like the big freezers fridges oh nice yeah right trailers so he's had me driving all over the countryside dropping and picking up those things we had the grand prix in melbourne mm. so mm. that was busy we had we had quite a lot of fridges he had to get out for that so i could go and give him a hand oh yeah cool sounds, sounds one interesting. Out had to go and pick them all up again oh <laughs> so. Yes, well, uh, anything left over, like some free meat or anything like that? Free oh, there's beers. always something left in the fridge. I think we came home with some salad and some oh, slabs yeah. of water and oh. come home with lots of things. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Mm. Uh, and uh, Jace, how are you going, Jace? Good, mate. Uh, Good. Speaking of the games, I heard the Ruskies tried to sneak in there. Did they? Oh, I didn't hear that. What yeah, happened? They had it on the news. Some Russians tried to get in pretending they were going to be working for the games and the cop- Australian cops are like, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. In trouble. Yeah. Why? Why would they want to get in? I don't understand. Was they just wanted to? Attend? Well, they want to get into Australia. Oh, so okay, right. They, they were saying, "Oh, yeah, we want jobs at the games," and they're like, "No, right. I don't think so." <laughs> right. Yeah. So look, oh, look, this games, eh? It's just, it's. I'm just staying put. There's a lot of people that live locally that are going away. Uh, you know, they're just Good getting idea. getting out of here. And uh, some of the the change traffic conditions is like the M1, the Pacific Highway. Uh, for some reason, to make things flow more smoothly, they've reduced it by 10k, the speed limit. So that's handy. And also, they've got these little game lanes. They're designated by a big yellow line. So they say the road had three lanes on it. Well, then now there's this big yellow line. So now you've only got two lanes and a games lane. Now, I just naturally thought that it was people, you know, if you had a ticket, you might be jumping the games lane, get to the venue quicker or something, you know, bypass the traffic. But no, yep. it's all about just uh, the official cars. That's the only ones that are allowed in there, official cars. And if you're caught in a games lane, right, and you're not an officialdom, well, then you would never guess what the fine is. Do you want to have a, a stab in the dark? Have, have, 100 bucks. No, 
no, way off. Wait, go, go crazy, Jace. Go crazy. Go crazy. A thousand pounds. Oh, you're getting closer. <laughs> Two thousand eight hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> Two thousand eight hundred dollars. And uh, yes. to drive in the lanes in your own country that you normally <laughs> travel to work and stuff. That's right. Isn't it ridiculous? And so anyway, and and also we've got all the the bins. You know, the, the you know your rubbish, your wheelie bins. Right, yep. you know, they the bin man comes at seven in the morning or whatever around here he does, but now comes at midnight. Yeah, while the games are on, he's coming at midnight because it's <laughs> it's really really quiet and he's really really noisy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know. It's all about keeping traffic off the streets. Like yep. I don't see too many garbage trucks, you know, on on bin day on the street. So. But it's all about that. That's what that's what we've got to put up with to, to host the games for the Commonwealth. So you're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. You take one for the team. We thank you. <laughs> We're not worthy. You the team. <laughs> you're right. If I get one of those fines, you won't, I won't be happy. <laughs> now, uh, look, we've got a couple of uh, emails and, and so forth this week. So let's go through those. Oh, well, the interesting ones, at least. Anyway, uh, where are we? So here's one from somebody... Uh, Stuart. Oh, yes, Stuart. Uh, thanks for mentioning the Silk Road podcast on Aussie Tech Heads uh, the other week. Uh, he tracked it down and listened to it recently. It was excellent. So he's also... Oh, that's good. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Stuart. Uh, and he's also said about something else he's enjoyed. I'll continue on. If you like that, you would probably also like the book The Cuckoo's Egg by Clifford Stoll. So it's the 1980s true story of a university sysadmin who found nine seconds of unaccounted for an unbilled time on a university computer. Uh, and all computer time was always built to a particular university project. He doggedly tracked down the discrepancy and eventually found it was a German hacker who was systematically getting unauthorized as access into the government and military service across the US. The hacker was also selling the information to the Soviet KGB. Computer hacking was in its infancy, so then it was hard for the sysadmin to get to the FBI and CIA interested in the breach, and it took several years of investigative work for the sysadmin to identify the hack hacker. Highly recommended. Best regards, Stuart. So, Stuart, I was going to take you on your recommendation. I'm going to go and hunt that down because it does sound interesting. So thanks for that tip. That's excellent. Uh, another one is from Paul through the Facebook. Uh, just letting you know, I've been enjoying listening to your program on TuneIn Radio for about five or six years. I uh, don't think I've missed an episode yet. So even if I'm three or nine weeks behind, keep up the great work. Paul from Facebook. Now, I think... Uh, Paul was uh, actually met Paul uh, the other week, or the other day, actually. He, uh, he was around uh, Rabina, so he popped in. He contacted me over the Facebook, and I said, yeah, yeah, come around for a coffee. The coffee ran out. I had to give him a water. But anyway, so uh, so we had, we had a water, and, uh, yeah, we had a good chat. So he's uh, from around about Toowoomba Way, and he also sent in a speak pipe. He used the website. He used the aussietechheads.com.au website, sent in a voicemail. So I'm going to play that for you right now. Just to show you that this technology does actually work. Hopefully, fingers <laughs> fingers crossed. Hey guys, it's Paul here. Just want to let you know I've been listening to your show for about uh, six years now. Really enjoying it. So uh, keep up the great work. Good stuff, Paul. And uh, yeah, cool. Next time on the coast, I'll offer you another water. We'll catch up again. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Uh, yeah. So if you've got anything to say uh, about uh, or tell us about, just uh, yeah, send us an email. Send us a uh, voicemail. Oh, I should plug Paul's business. He's in the IT. He's in Toowoomba. He's the entire computer services. There we go. There's Paul's business card for those of you on the YouTube. Entire business services. There you go. Uh, all right. Now, where are we going to go from there? Let's start doing some stories. See what we got. Now, look, it pains me to start off with an Apple story, but I will. Five things to know about Apple's new 9.7-inch iPad. I don't want to bang on for this for too long because you probably already know if you're an Apple person or you listen to the Aussie Mac Zone, but the highlights of the new Apple 9.7-inch iPad are an Apple Pencil. For the first time, Apple's entry-level iPad will work with the Apple Pencil Digital Stylus. So that's happy days. You can use it on your pages. Oh, your... Steve, Job. Steve Jobs would be happy. He would be, wouldn't he? He would be. He'd, he'd, he'd be just going... This is what I would be doing if I was still there. <laughs> uh, so uh, the pencil, <laughs> no, the pencil will be sold. It's even called a pencil just to just because he he loves the name of it as well. But the Apple pencil, so the Apple it's pencil. The, it's not a. It's not called a stylus, so it's all right. It's a pencil. 
well, so far. So it's going to be sold separately for $149. Yes, I'll take Ooh. three. Uh, How the, much is the Microsoft one, do we know? Oh, that'd be about 99 I think, from memory. That's just a guess. But I think it might have been 99 um, I don't know. Uh, the processor, major, another major move is the Apple A10 Fusion processor. The inclusion of the chip will provide a 40% leap in CPU performance. So yeah, that's all going pretty good there. And the thing in the picture, if you're on the uh, YouTube, if this is a fair dink of picture of it, it's a more edge-to-edge -edge screen for the iPad. So that's good. It looked more, more in line with the, uh, you know, the iPhone 10 or the iPhone X. Uh, the other specs, Apple said the 9.7-inch screen on the new iPad would feature Apple's popular retina display and blah, blah, blah. Um, that's all I want to really say about that because we don't go off about, you know, Samsung tablets when they get released. So I think that's enough for that. You know, it's funny. For the first time ever today, I was in Melbourne and I went to the Apple store. Never first time in Melbourne? Melbourne. No, I've been to Melbourne before. because <laughs> yeah. the first time I happened to be walking past an Apple store and I went... Oh, I've never seen one of those. <laughs> right. And I went in and had a look. That's the one in Federation Square, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mm. was up there. I went to see the um, the what's the the Federation Square with the Avengers thing. Took the kids. They took the kids to see the Avengers museum right, thing right. that they've got there at the moment. Mm. You go, you go in one end and you come out and adventure on the next. Yeah, right. No, oh, that's it. Sounds yeah. pretty good. And so I was there walking past, and I went. And I didn't even think to even look. Would have they have even had that iPad in there? No, well, it's it only released everywhere yet. Or? I think it's only just been announced uh, yeah. this week at some. Uh, I think it was where, where was it? It did say where it was announced that it was some educational summit or something that Apple put on. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I did read that somewhere. Yeah, yeah so yeah, but uh, they're, they're now trying to say that they they you could you can use them in schools, but I, I really don't see how you can. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm I can't mm. comment because I don't know really. I don't really want to comment, to be honest, but I wouldn't have thought that you could use an iPad or any sort of tablet in school. I think kids need more than tablets, don't they, in school? Schools can't education. afford to buy pencils and books, let alone tablets. <laughs> but well, isn't a laptop going to be so much better for the processing power in, in education? I think so. You know, yeah. And the applications and all those sorts of things? Well, I think in my kids at primary school, uh, which we've only got one there now, is they bring your own iPad. He takes his own iPad too, slow as a dog, but still to get through what he has to do. Uh, not too much. It's just every now and then I think they use it. And in high school, uh, yes, yeah, she's got a Windows 10 laptop, which is... Yeah, so that's the same. My daughter's going into secondary next year, and we've been told that they have to have laptops, and they've been told they can have Mac or Apple. Right. Sorry, Mac or, Apple, Mac or yeah. Windows. Yeah, that's right. fine. Yeah, but I wouldn't have... They would never have said to me they have to have an iPad. I wouldn't have thought that... Mm. The, the, I think they've got to have a uh, PC because, you know, they're going to learn PowerPoints yeah. and whatever, you know. So, But uh, even so, the, 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 the mobile versions of Word and all those things aren't really going to be hmm. the best on an on a, on a iPad, are they really? I mean, they work, but yeah. they're not going to be kind of there with a big screen and a good keyboard and that's you know, right everything. yeah that's right yeah no i think that the, i think that's the right way around i think uh pcs for high school that's good yeah it's locked down yeah it's locked down personal computers I, I wouldn't say pcs as in just windows I, I mean you know they can have a they can have a mac a macbook or something if they want i think that's still going to be just as beneficial to them isn't it well i guess it would be but i think this school but you either normally you get schools that are either mac or windows well, I well, I've looked at a few schools, and over. one of the schools had a Mac lab, and I think I said that on the right. show the other yes, week. Yes, that's I, right. I thought, I thought why? Mm. It, it, everything they can do, they can do on both operating systems, so I don't know specifically why it has to be. Um, I can hear noises yes. in the background. Yes. Yeah. So do you want to go? You can go and check that out if you like. Sorry, if there's noises in the background out there. I'll just <laughs> tell them that there's noises. Right. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so they had a Mac lab, but they said that the, the PCs were generally what they were using. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. And the software that they were using was in the cloud anyway. It's like mm. remote desktoping servers. So, but they're pretty but much... I, my point is... Yeah, they're, they're... My point is I didn't think that, 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 you know, you could lay out, you know, Photoshop or something on an iPad and use it really to its full potential. Oh, no, nothing like that. Nothing like that. But they're, they're locked down, you know, tighter than a fish's you know what, because uh, like I tried to even just install our home printer here on it tonight. I just wouldn't install, couldn't find it, just wouldn't do it. So The new iPad is available for order today and starts delivering to customers and arriving in stores later this week. 
Oh, wow. They expect big lines up at your nearest Apple it's store. Fast. Yeah, yeah, usually it's like, okay, we're announcing this thing. See you in a couple of months when it comes out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they, because they reduced the price of the iPad, didn't they, last year? I think it was uh, bring it down in the hope to sell a bit more entry-level ones. And I think that worked. And I think this this one was going to be sold for about four, this is probably US dollars, but 479 Where'd this story come 469 from? 69 for the 32 gig Wi-Fi that's model. That's Aussie. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Aussie. Yeah, Aussie dollars. So that's all right. That's not bad. Um, but anyway. schools can get it for four thirty nine. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. All right. Um, what is, What do you got, Chase? I'm over that story now. That's Apple. Uh, last August, a TCL executive confirmed that the company was gearing up to launch Palm branded smartphones in 2018. Ooh. Speaking to a trusted source, they've learned that one such device will be launching on Verizon in the second half of the year. At least that's the plan for now. Sadly, we don't know anything about the phone itself at this time. We know it runs Android, but the fact that TCL is working with Verizon is telling. The carrier was a long-time Palm partner, selling most of the brand's WebOS handsets all the way back through the Pre-2. Verizon had intended to carry the ill-fated Pre-3, but the phone was cancelled by Palm's then buyer HP before it could be released in the US. Oh, there you go. And I just brought up the, the story there for you. I was big on the Palm. I was writing, I wrote a yes, game I for remember. it. And used to sell it online. Yeah, and what happened? That just died a unnatural death like everything else. The iPhone came out. That's what happens. iPhone kills that everything. That's exactly killed, what happened. iPhone killed pretty much everything. It killed Tom Tom. I remember, it killed everything. Yep. Yeah. I remember having a, a Palm one as well, and everyone was laughing at me, thinking, why the hell would you want something so big? What do you want that for? <laughs> Such a big green yeah, they carry around tablets. And it's like, what do you want a phone that can do all that for? And then the <laughs> iPhone came out and everyone wanted one with a big screen on it. Mm. Do you yeah, ever go back and – sorry, just go back to Apple. But do you ever go – have you ever gone back and watched the Steve Jobs, you know, um, iPhone reveal – Show? It's a phone. It's an <laughs> internet device. <laughs> I remember them saying it's that the screen iPhone. size that they had was the perfect size and it wouldn't need to be any smaller or any bigger. That's right. That's yeah. right. They, they probably got the idea from the palm because the guy who invented it um, made little blocks of wood in different sizes and he carried around in his top pocket for weeks until he found one that felt the right size to be able to fit in a pocket and wasn't too bulky and wasn't too heavy, wasn't too thick or anything. And then he started designing the product itself. Mm, yeah, right. Mm. So a lot of the sizes would be based on his previous research. Mm, interesting. I can't remember what my, my Palm brand was. I had a uh, handspring visor prism. It was a colour one. Very nice. Mm. I vaguely remember mine being called an E-pad or something like that. I can't remember. It was oh, some weird. E-pad. Mm. Something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think I, I didn't have a palm. I sort of steered away from all that. I just, uh, I think uh, that had a stylus. Is that is that right? That had a yep. stylus. Yeah, I, my mate mm. had one of those, and oh, it was all right. I think it was was it buggy or, or laggy or something. Was it? No, no. Was it was fine. Right? Okay. Yeah, it might have been a bit old when I saw it because I think he was throwing I think it away. My one had Windows oh, like Seven that. on it. Oh Windows yeah, 7, right. Was it? Right. Was it Windows 7 or Windows? Wouldn't have been Windows 98. No, it was Windows 7, or Windows 2000 or something like that. Oh, I remember Windows. They had the Windows Windows CE on the Microsoft small ones. CE, yeah, the yeah. CE. That's it, Microsoft CE. But wasn't that a variation of? It was Windows, uh, Windows Mobile. Hmm. Have a look Jeez, at that link I sent ago. you there, Glenn. Oh, where'd you send that to me? Zoom. Oh, where's that? <laughs> I can't handle it. He likes he likes links in Zoom. Hang on, I'll see if I can. Oh no, that selected everything. Hang on, where is that going to open? Oh, over here. Okay, hang on a second. I'll get it up for you in a second. Hang on, hang on. Here it comes. Here it comes. There's the old story. Oh, there we go. A qu quirl downloadable software by Jason Oakley. Be the first to review yep. this item currently unavailable. What happened? We don't the know. The palm died. <laughs> that was my palm game. I wrote some music in the mod tracker with it, and I um, talked to Astroware, who had a um, music player. They let me uh, put it into my software. They're going to take a commission 
from every sale, but because there were so few sales, they didn't worry about it. But the uh, guys there are really good with games and stuff. But yeah, I made this little game and sold it on palmgear.com, which was a place you could go to buy and sell palm games. Be an exciting and entertaining shape matching game with increasing difficulty and speed as you progress through the game. Mystery shapes help or hinder your progress and bombs with a capital B let you blow up columns. <laughs> See if you can get the highest score on the high score table. You have to keep your wits about you and play fast and smart. More colourful shapes appear as you progress through the levels. Just watch out for the blockers. Uh, fun puzzle game, bonus levels, Astroware Aura audio engine, background music and digitized sound effects on OS 5 Plus and some Sony devices. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Support for OS 3.5 and above. Date first available Amazon, October 2nd, 2003. Yep. Uh, warranty. For warranty information about this product, please click here. What was your warranty? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I didn't submit it to Amazon. They picked that up from Palm Gear, downloaded it, and put it on the um, picture onto their server. Right. right. You could ever from there because Amazon came out like years after. What's that, a song list or something? Is it? What's that? That's these games, the, the leaderboard, is it? Or something like that. Yeah. Oh, Randy. I was thinking, who's Randy? <laughs> I had uh, beta testers, and there was a guy who said, put it, I wanted to put uh, give them some credit. So. There's a guy who's Randy. He said just wanted that. Gavin Maxwell was a big palm guy in the day. He works for Apple now. So Randy's uh, a good name, a good username, then, isn't it? Yeah, and Becky Blueberry was my wife at the time. <laughs> now, why? Now, where, Randy. <laughs> what's a uh, quirl? What What is that? Where'd that come from? It was just a name that popped into my head when I was designing it. Right. Okay. Quirl. Cool. Excellent stuff. Hey, you're good at having names pop into your head, are you? Just random words. Yeah. Mm, happens it's all good. the time. You could you could you could invent names for companies and they could pay for it. That'd be sweet. The human company name engine. All right. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now speak. Just put twenty cents in. Yeah. <laughs> what name I don't want to say from. where you insert it though. <laughs> in the slot. Well, in your pocket. Of also, course. take Visa. Now, talking about <laughs> talking about uh, uh, is that tap and go or is that slide? No, nah, it's the old slide. slide. Yeah, so the old he, slide. Yeah. He has he hasn't had the surgery yet for the tap and go. No. Now for the insert of the chip, <laughs> you know what I mean, into the palm. Now, sorry, uh, sorry YouTube. Now, uh, look, while we're talking about Windows 10, <laughs> well, maybe not Windows 10, but Windows uh, loosely, Microsoft is finally going to retire Windows 10 15 11 in two weeks. So, to the 2015 version of Windows 10, making it uh, the end of 29 months of support. Now, Windows 10 15 11 will receive a final set of security patches on April 10. If you're still running a 15 11, wake up. Also destined for an Apple 10 retirement is Windows 10 1607, the mid-2016 feature upgrade that will receive its last security patches on that day as well, Home and Pro Windows 10. Kind of surprised people would still even have those. I mean, the way that... The automatic updates happen with Windows. I'm really surprised. Well, when I was, they even have to retire it. I would have thought that it would have been gone now, ages I was, ago. In. I was speaking to someone the other day, and I won't name names, but he will know yes, who, who he is. Did he have hair? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe so. Now, yeah. now this person oh, so it wasn't was me. looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, now this person was telling me that. Uh, he disables window updates on computers. Oh, no, it wasn't me. For entirely. Uh, so this is why I'd say, uh, Jordan, that there's people out there with version 15.11. Well, they do, but I would think that most of those people don't want to update because they're probably running a pirate copy of Windows or something and are too scared it's going to become mm. unregistered. So do yourself a favour and get a good copy. That's the first step you should take anyway. I think like as... every update, every update you can possibly get because mm. they're there for they're there for a reason, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So, like, I think well, you can check. What do you do? You type in the start. You hit the start button and type about, and it'll come up and tell you what version you're running. 
and the yeah. and it'll tell you Windows 10 version something, and it's the 1511. And the way that the Windows 10 sort of works their version numbers is it's always uh, the first two digits is the year, and the second two digits is the month of release or whatever. So this one was obviously mm. 5th, uh, November 2015, and that's when Windows 10 was released, if you remember, uh, way back mm. then. And the other one was the the one I just said talking about also was going to uh, go tadas was the sixteen oh seven which was July sixteen, uh, and I think it was the last one whichever code that was was that like nine or uh, seventeen nine or something like that, I think that that was the yeah, one that oh nine, yeah some that was the one that was. yeah broke a couple of computers or and laptops and stuff because for some reason they they started going and. Uh, uh, down the path of well we're going to detect what hardware you've got and if it's going to run too slow or it's it, we're just going to say it's not compatible and it's just not going to upgrade so i saw a few issues with that with that upgrade to that latest one and uh, people ringing microsoft and microsoft have just been pushing them back to windows 8 and so forth so there you go but, update. Oh, but what people usually do is go this is ridiculous my windows computer is breaking down since windows updates i'm going to go and buy a mac that's that's yeah. the best answer i always use it it's <laughs> funny that, that windows run yeah, it's funny that Windows runs on so many different brands and so many different types of hardware. Well, that's got to be expected, doesn't it? Mac yeah. doesn't. No, that's right. Mac is designed for it's, its why... one, one set of hardware, yep. and that's why they run perfectly. Most of Windows' problems with crashing and stuff is caused by third-party driver software for random sound cards exactly. and graphics cards. That's what, and... that's what a lot of people don't understand. That's why I always say if you want to go and buy a PC, go and buy a Windows Surface or a, something like that that's – Windows, you know, mm. has everything there. It's, a lot. it's that's the equivalent of Mac, isn't it? Really? Yeah, because you could have your Windows machine, you know, and you've say you you bought Windows and all this, you know, you spent uh, whatever, you know, fifteen hundred on a desktop machine, and then for some reason you go, oh, I want to hook that old printer up, <laughs> that old parallel printer. Don't have a parallel mm. port. Hang on, I'll get on eBay. I'll get a parallel adapter card for three dollars fifty, and put that in, and then Windows crashes. And then you blame Windows. So, and then you yeah. blame Windows. <laughs> it's right. But hey, you could do that with Mac, could you? Anyway. No. You probably wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to go and buy an adapter and plug it in and hope for the best. Well, they're uh, like their spare parts supply chain, whatever you want to call it, so tight. Like uh like yeah. I, I believe that like if if you've got like say a, a motherboard that you have to repair, uh, first of all you can only be an authorized repairer to even get the parts. And then they send mm. you the parts. Uh, you've got to scan them in and send them back the old. You even got to send them back the part that didn't work. Send that back as well. So it's, it's tight. They just control the whole ecosystem entirely. I think that's also why gamers uh, a lot. They also like the Windows P or prefer PCs for gaming, don't they? Because well, of the ability to be able to pull out their video cards and put in bigger ones. Or yeah, yeah. That's change right. power supplies and all those sorts of things to get better results. Mm, yeah, well, I've got a little Mac can't. Mini, but yeah. yeah, what can you do with that other than GarageBand? Other than what Mac no allow email, you to do? No emails, no emails. And that's why you have no problems because you're just doing what what the boss says is okay. You're not allowed to do anything else. Yeah. So they're good for that. Yeah. They're good. They're good. You know, they're good for people who just want to use them for what they're what they are and what they do, and nothing else. That's mm. fine. Uh, did you have any stories, Jordan, or you were just you were just? Uh, I did have a couple. In with there was us? just. A couple. They were very rushed, so I've barely even read them to even confirm that they're going to be okay, but I hope they are. That's all right. One was just, I was, after hearing our story last week about the pedestrian that got hit by that Uber auto yeah. automated car, yep. car, I just thought it was interesting because now Jaguar drives into driverless tech as others show caution. Jaguar and Google's self-driving tech offshoot Waymo, does that sound right, will team yep. together up. Uh, we'll team together to turn up to 20,000 of Britain's car makers, electric I-PACE compact SUVs into uh, driverless transport drones. Right. Um, the, the Project Liberty partnership announced overnight uh, will launch its first driverless I-PACE later this year with the rest of the cars joining Waymo's fleet by 2020. The long-term strategic collaboration with further Waymo and Jaguar Land Rovers shared goals to make cars uh, safe, free, uh, sorry, safe, not free, uh, free up <laughs> people's wish. valuable time and improve mobility for everyone, yeah. the company said. In the so I just thought that was interesting that um, 
they're not going to let this Uber thing stop them and everyone else is jumping on board. I thought this this whole Uber thing was would would really put a halt on it and scare people off. Well, know? I think you I think somebody uh, dying from it or whatever. Yeah, I think it has in where was it Arizona? I think because they suspended all the testing and I think mm. it's still suspended. I don't think they're allowed to restart. Uh, so that might just be localised to that part of the world. Uh, and it yeah. turned out that one of the reasons it crashed was come at some of the safety software was disabled. Well, that's handy. So yeah, that's, that's why handy. they ended up running over. They didn't detect they were there because it had been disabled. So right. So wouldn't you? Think- so they've taken the blame off the vehicle now and put the blame into human error instead. Yeah. But if it's human Not error, the person driving but the intelligence. Company- yeah, so no. so you wouldn't have, you'd think that they'd have some sort of fail safe that these sort of safety systems can't get turned off, and if they are turned off, the car won't start, or the, the, if there's an issue, the car just slows and stops or something. But the report hmm. says Uber disabled Volvo's SUV's safety system before the fatality occurred. Oh, well, does someone had someone's head roll for that? Oh, I'd reckon. Wait and see. Something's going to have to happen. Mm-hmm. We don't want people to be confused or think it was a failure of the technology that we supply for Volvo because that's not the case. A spokesman for Aptiv PLC said by phone, the Volvo XC90 standard advanced driver assistance system has nothing to do with the Uber test vehicle's autonomous driving system. Aptiv is speaking up for the technology to avoid being tainted by the fatality involving Uber, which may have been following a standard practice by disabling other tech as it develops and tests its own autonomous driving system. Uber's system failed to slow the vehicle uh, as it hit the woman. Police in Tempe, Arizona, National Transportation Safety Board are investigating the incident. But yet, so they disabled the safety mm, system. Does it make you wonder, like maybe the sceptic in me, I guess, but does it, would it make you wonder that they're throwing the blame to off the actual technology because if the blame went to the technology, well, the share price would plummet um, maybe, Ooh, maybe they, absolutely. yeah, they couldn't have as much money for R and D and blah blah blah. So they've moved the blame towards a human, which may or may not be able to be prosecuted depending on why the, this technology was turned off. But yeah, you know, that's just 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 a uh, random thought that you know I have random thoughts, Jace, just like you have random names <laughs> coming <Yep>. to your <laughs> head. <laughs> now, look, I just think that at the end of the day, as much as this has happened, I just don't think we can. I don't think we can we can stop, you know what I mean. I think it has to, the technology has to move forward, regardless. Mm, I guess so. As horrible as it sounds, I don't think it should be halted. We yeah. need we we need the technology to go forward. We need it. Yeah, but do you need do you need technology to go forward in that space? Well, you know, yeah, sure, put it somewhere. Why not? Else, but... I think we I think we need technology to to go forward in all spaces. I think even if cars will end up being safer drivers than people, particularly when people can get fatigued, they can get drunk, they can get distracted, and when uh, daylight savings changes over, there's ten percent increase in accidents because people are tired because they're not used to waking up at that time and driving and stuff so but not only that the lead up in technology the the lead up in building that technology is only going to open up new areas of new technology in better ways as well for anything and everything i mean think of how advanced that artificial intelligence is getting to run those cars not that i ever want the robots robots to come and you know take over the planet but um, I think technology's going. I was go. like, yeah, thanks to NASA, we got the microwave and Velcro, so every well, bit helps something else. Yeah, I guess it so. does. Well, I don't think they're going away. So, so it's so. just one step. It's just one step forward. Hmm. Whether it doesn't matter in which direction, it's just got to be. Yeah. You know, we need technology to evolve. We have to evolve. Our power's got to change. Our, everything's got to change, or we're just not going to be sustainable, are we? So we need technology to move forward. We need pollution to stop. We need. There's, there's so many things that have to happen. Mm. Yeah, I guess so, so. Every step in technology forward is it's a step into something that could be. Hmm. As long new, as it's safe. You know? As long as it's safe. As long as it's safe, of course. Yeah. We don't, you know, cars going out there running over people. But ah. think if you've got automated cars, how many less cars it might mean on the road too? What if you can send you? You have one car and one car in the family takes everyone to work and then comes and picks them all back up at the end of the day. Mm. <laughs> well, I reckon it probably will get to a stage maybe where like the cars, because there's a lot of wasted energy, you know, in the stop start of everything. So like imagine if all, if all the cars say they're at traffic lights, right? 
and they're all in the traffic, all at the traffic, waiting at the traffic light. And they're all automated cars. Now, think and say how much energy you'd probably save uh, if all those cars just move forward together. Do you know what I mean? Like instead of um, at, like you know, one goes forward a bit, slows, goes forward a bit, you know, and sort of goes back back the, through the. No more rubber neckers either. When there's an accident on the other side of the road, the car's not going to slow down to have a look. That's you know, completely stopping traffic on one side when it's completely clear on that side. That would Flying vehicles are also going to be next. I don't know how automated they'll be, but no. That, yeah, but there was one, wasn't there? Wasn't there a flying helicopter or something the other week? I saw a story the other day. I can't remember. I should have flagged it when I was reading mm. it about someone. Someone reckons they're going to have a flying car by yeah, some year, whatever, some time frame. I can't remember. Oh, right. so but uh, um, you know, I, th- I saw my first Tesla car today. Right. I had never never seen one before. Geez, it looked really nice. But then she said to me, she said, "Oh, we've got charging stations everywhere and rah rah." And I said, "Oh, yeah. So what's it cost to?" to you know to charge a car at one of your charging stations she said oh it probably cost about 30 bucks to charge it full and you get about 500 kilometers out of it right 30 bucks and i thought and i thought to myself well i know some of these small cars you can fill them up for 50 bucks and get about mm. six or seven hundred out of it so mm. Mm. i wonder is that like if that I wonder like- if the price is really much different I wonder if the, the price Might is be more, like loaded. You know, better for the environment, but maybe not so much for the pocket. But I wonder if the price is loaded, say, at the charging station rather than if you just went home and plugged her in. You know, I wonder well, if they it's... said you can charge it at home, but there is charging stations as well. So, yeah, you're probably right. The charging stations probably. will charge more than what you get charged at home. Yeah. But your electricity bill would get pretty big at home charging your car all the time, wouldn't it? I guess so. Just charge it through the day when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> under the sun. Uh, Jace, what else have you got, please? Boeing was hit Wednesday by the WannaCry computer virus Ooh. and after a scare within the company that vital airplane production equipment might be brought down, company officials later offered assurances that the attack had been quashed with minimal damage. Though news of the attack triggered widespread alarm within the company and among airline customers during the day, by evening Boeing was calling for calm. We've done a final assessment, said Linda Mills, the head of communications for Boeing Commercial Airplanes. The vulnerability was limited to a few machines. We deployed software patches. There was no interruption to the 777 JET program or any of our other programs. Early in the day when the cyber attack struck, the reaction was anything but calm. Mike Vanderwell, chief engineer at Boeing Commercial Airplane Production Engineering, sent out an alarming alert about the virus calling for all hands on deck. It's Mr. Zising rapidly out of North Charleston. I just heard 777, the automatic spar assembly tools may have gone down. He wrote, adding his concern that the virus could hit equipment using functional tests of airplanes ready to roll out and potentially spread to airplane software. Vanderwell's message said the attack required a battery-like response, a reference to the 787 in-flight battery fires in 2013 that grounded the world's fleet of Dreamliners and led to an extraordinary three-month-long engineering effort to find a fix. Mm. Was it, is this the first virus in the clouds? Well, you never know. Isn't that amazing? Jeez. It's... So does that mean if they've got the WannaCry bug in the plane that they're running Windows <laughs> on the plane? Probably. Well, yeah. That, that like everything. When everyone complains about how they hate Windows and love Mac and they're flying around in planes that are operated by Windows. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... It so... makes you think twice, doesn't it? Yeah, so it says uh, further down in this story, it just says, How does it happen? Yeah, the one acquired virus exploits the floor in Windows. Yeah, yeah it was so designed... must be. Mm. So yeah. it was, was obviously not the plane, it was, was it the um, just the, the what do you call it, the tower? Yeah, so at the time, coordination? oh, hang on, that no, it's <laughs> no, it's Trump's fault, apparently. The one cry, that's <laughs> the one acquired virus, which is blame Trump. The WannaCry virus first surfaced in May 2017 worldwide cyber attack. Once a single computer is infected, it can spread to all Windows networks. We know all that. At the time, the Trump administration blamed North Korea for the attacks. Oh, no, that's North Korea. Uh, Microsoft issued patches to plug the vulnerability. However, Corey Nuxreiner, Chief Technology Officer of Seattle Security Technology from WatchGuard Technology, said some companies with specialized equipment didn't update very often. So Microsoft declined the contact. It was probably not their problem. But yeah. Uh, what was his last name? Yeah, I don't know. Something. Nux Schreiner. That almost <laughs> sounds Klingon. I don't know. Uh, Nux Schreiner. Uh, Elon. I'll do this Elon Musk one. 
And along with all the troubles with Facebook, it's, uh, I don't know if this was the reason, but anyway, Elon Musk pulls Tesla and SpaceX from Facebook. Now, this is apparently has been attributed to the hashtag delete Facebook movement uh, after it has grown quite considerably, <coughs> apparently. Uh, who, who's deleted Facebook? Have you deleted? Well, no, I know you guys haven't because I talked to you no. today on it. Uh, so anyway, the movement has grown after data. The data firm Cambridge Analytics was accused of obtaining personal information from about 50 million users. So Elon Musk had poked fun at speaker brand Sonos after it said it would suspend advertising on Facebook for one week. His followers challenged him to have his own company's pages deleted, and he did so within minutes. Uh, Musk said he didn't realise that his SpaceX brand had a Facebook page. Uh, literally never seen it even once, he wrote on Twitter. It will be gone soon. The page had more than 2.5 million followers. Before it was deactivated in 2006 facebook used spacex to launch a new communication satellite uh, valued at more than 200 million us dollars however the rocket exploded on launch pad and destroyed the satellite poor old facebook after after it blew up he tweeted yeah my fault for being an idiot we did give him a free launch to make up for it and i think they had some insurance so there you go facebook came out all right ready to go and open a myspace page yeah <laughs> i don't think you can Oh, well, it's not for that anymore, is it? It's all bands and music and whatnot. I don't didn't did what is it? People still use it. I was just cracking a joke. I didn't think people still used it. I heard someone talking about MySpace the other day, and I thought, oh, MySpace. <laughs> Haven't heard that word for a while. Is Tom still there? I wonder if Tom's still there. Let's have a look. Um, MySpace. Someone said that you know they remember hop. Someone on Facebook said they remembered hopping from MySpace to Facebook, and why did we ever do it? MySpace was so much better with all the things we could do with backgrounds and yeah. Look, I remember MySpace. We had we had a page there, and not that I oh search. I, oh, geez, that's a big search box, isn't it? I don't look at the size of this search. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I thought Justin Timberlake had something to do with MySpace. Now, is that my imagination? Oh, look, we're still there on MySpace. That's an old one. We are still there. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Which one's me? This is before. This I is can't. I can't pre pick. <laughs> pre Jays. You've morphed in into June. In June 2011, Specific Media Group and Justin Timberlake jointly purchased MySpace for 35 million. I thought Justin Timberlake had something to do with it. I remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. I, don't I wonder know if that makes him any money still. In 2009, they had 1,600 employees. Yeah. Right. And they don't now. Nothing anymore. Oh look, you must be able to still. They remember Mark. I think I've got an old. I think I've got an old band on there Do still. They work? Too. It was also acquired by News Corporation in July two thousand five for five hundred and eighty million. Yeah, right. But in twenty eleven, Justin Timberlake bought it for thirty five million. There you go. I don't think they. Oh, well, if you got a spare, you got a spare thirty five million kicking around, you know. Why, Why not? not save my space? For mm. someone, for up. someone that's been five hundred and eighty million. And now it's been bought for thirty-five. Yeah, something. See how valuable it is. Yeah, something's not right. I was going to say there, um, Glinch. Type in um, Fudge Live, like the chocolate. See if that's still there. My old one. Hang fudge on. Live, F U D G E, like the chocolate, and then L I V in, like live on MySpace. See if that's in there. Where's that search? I won't need glasses for that search, will I? Fudge uh, Live. That's my old band. See if that comes up. Fudge, hot fudge, Robbie Williams. No, 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 no. Fudge Live. Take take the take the space out of it, but out of Fudge Live. See if that see if that like changes it. Uh, fudge Slide. That'd no. be interesting. It mustn't be there anymore. Fade it's Live. Good. Fade <laughs> Live. Was some, there was some funny pictures on there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, Unless it was Fudge Fudge Live Band. I don't know, maybe you could probably put Fudge Live Band. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, but anyway. Not with it. No, it wouldn't with a Fug, a fug E Live. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we up? I'm sure it was. I, I could have could have sworn that it was still there. Maybe it's, maybe it's not. Let me let me do a uh, Crypto Jacker story. Uh, and then Jace will go, because you've got a few to get through, I think. But so I'll go after this one. Uh, researchers at Trend Micro have recently discovered... Android OS Hidden Miner, 
a piece of malware that embeds itself into Android devices, obfuscates its presence and proceeds to use the device CPU to mine Monero. Uh, That's not the Holden, just it's cryptocurrency, (laughs) a cryptocurrency that has gained favour with criminals because of its anonymous, untraceable nature. I thought they were all like that. Uh, Andronimus, oh, Andronimus, Android, Android OS, Hidden Hammer, Hidden Miner, <laughs> what am I saying? And Android OS, Hidden Miner, is far from benign. The, dem- the demands that cryptocurrency mining places on a CPU are so great that the CPU can overheat, causing the, vi- the device to lock, fail, and be permanently damaged. Similar malware such as Laopi has been known to cause heat-related battery swelling in the point that the phone can actually bubble and buckled now here's a little picture of not much uh so android os hidden hammer is currently being delivered through a fake google play update app so far it has been available to users in china and india though trend micro researchers note that there's no technical reason that the malware couldn't enter other markets so as protection from the malware in addition to anti-malware software on your device the researchers have recommendations that are basic good mobile device hygiene including download only from official app marketplaces and by that you wouldn't really want to why would you want to download from anywhere else than the the play store maybe if you've got a device that uh takes play store off your menu and replaces it with its own i think sam samsung still got a play store or App Store, Samsung App Store, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, but so, but that'd be obviously okay. But just don't probably download apps from um, Shonky Town App Store, yep. you know, and you'll be right. So you <laughs> you heard of this Monero, Jace? Yep. Um, currently, my computers are mining a coin called Aeon A E O N, which is based on Monero, and before that, it was Electronium, which is also based on Monero. Nice, nice. And speaking of which, how is the Aussie Tech Crypto going? Going really well. We've uh, got a sponsor now. Australia Coin is going to sponsor our episodes. So nice. we're talking about them on the show. We're going to have uh, Jack Hurley from Australia Coin back on the show for guest spots every now and then. Nice, good stuff. And what does the, the Australia Coin do? It's just the, the coin that... Uh... Yeah. Right. So how does he say... If you, if you get a uh, Australia coin wallet every Friday on the Crypto Coppers Facebook page, they have an airdrop and give away free uh, Australia coins. The token is called NAH, N-A-H. Right. So how does... Uh, so the guy that you get on every now and then, is he the creator of the coin? He was involved at the start, yeah. So how does... So, it, so he's pushing this. So how does he make money or does he make money? Out of this, or how is I it? think he's got other jobs and stuff, but um, he potentially. He was, uh, so when when you start off with a coin, you can start off with a pre mine, and start off with hundreds of thousands of coins that you keep, and you can use that for promotions, to giving away to people and things like this. So um, he manages that side of things and pops right. on the show to say hello, and uh, during during the every Friday afternoon, gives away some coins. Yeah, excellent. All right. So be tuned to, uh, be sure to tune in to the Aussie Tech Crypto iTunes and wherever else you get your podcasts from. Uh, episode 11 this week, or episode 12 next week. So that's going all right. Yeah. Uh, what about, speaking of like this week, next week, uh, Easter, is there a show over the Easter Monday period? Do you know? Haven't got that far. Uh, we're going to have one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Every week. Probably, yeah. Rain, hail or shine. Great Except stuff. for the uh, week where I'm going to Melbourne for a bit of a holiday, the next school holiday is coming up in a couple of weeks, so oh. probably not. I hope you gave your note to Will. Hope you... <laughs> now... he, this is if he watches the show or listens to it. This is your notice, Will. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, you got a little Windows or oh, Linux on Windows story, Jace. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft has released a tool to help Linux Linux distribution maintainers bring their distros to the Windows Store to run on Windows 10's Windows subsystem for Linux. Microsoft Microsoft describes the tool as a reference implementation for a Windows subsystem for Linux WSL distribution installer application, which is aimed at both distribution maintainers and developers who want to create custom Linux distributions for running on WSL. We know that many Linux distros rely entirely on open source software, so we would like to bring WSL closer to the OSS community, said Tara Raj of Microsoft WSL team. 
We hope open sourcing this project will help increase community engagement and bring more of your favorite distros to the Microsoft Store. WSL helps programmers build a full Linux development environment for testing production code on a Windows machine. It allows them to run Linux shell tools and popular open source programming languages, as well as the Apache web server and Oracle MySQL. As of Windows 10 full creators update, anyone can use WSL to install and run several Linux distributions, command line tool interface tools. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I, I put a... Technology oh, moves ever faster. Something went off in my ear. I put a, uh, oh. <laughs> I put a, uh, what do you call it, an emulator on yep. young bloke's uh, PC. It was an Android emulator. Was it called Nox or something? And uh, right. yeah, it worked quite well. So yeah, it came up in his Windows, little, uh, yeah, screen, Android screen. And so I guess this is something similar. It's just for the command line tool stuff. You can't oh, uh, right. run games or applications. You can't do windowing stuff. But, right. Uh, there's a lot of tools and things that run from command line. That's really important for Linux. And the uh, um, Apache web server is one of the most popular ones on the internet. So does that mean you've got to have basically the core system of Android running? Sorry, of Linux. Of, of, of Linux running in Windows. So you're going to have yeah. pretty much two operate two operating systems running in one. That's right. Pretty much. So why would you want to do that? So I mean, people can running, develop more stuff Apache, for Windows. Hmm. But if you're running, you know, Apache or something like that, you're not going to want to have the sources used up for two operating systems, are you? Well, it helps Linux get onto other things. Plus, there's uh, Apache specific applications and Perl and Python and things which run really well on Linux that have already been written. Instead of porting everything over to Windows, you can just run it directly on Windows using the Linux subsystem. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I've done it. Done it before, man. You can use, yeah, I've done it before. You, know, you can, you can. There's lots of ways of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like um, spend, running it as a VM them. or dual booting or anything like that, it actually becomes part of Windows, the tools and everything. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Is that the full core operating system, two core operating systems together, taking up two loads of system, or is it going to be kind of using the Windows core as well? Hmm. Yeah, both. Now, uh, Jase, hit us with another one because you got some. Plenty. I was just going to quickly mention on your story there, though. Um, uh, there was another Android um, emulator, or you can install Android directly on a PC. Yes, Have there you... was two I could choose from, but I chose this Nox. I think it was. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, that was. I think that was an emulator. Um, um, that was an emulator. This other one was a full-blown Android for PC. Right, right, but it worked okay. All he wanted to do was play Baseball Boy or something, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I downloaded the emulator and uh, yeah, stuck it on there for him. So he was happy as Larry, uh, except that I yeah. I played for the first forty five minutes. <laughs> <'Cause> it, <laughs> got Good me. game, was it? It was oh, before the, all right. Before the show's out, if I remember, if I can, if I can find it, I'll, I'll tell you the address of the one I found a while back. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, I don't know if this is the actual... The one I had was yeah, an actual installer. You just downloaded Nexi and then onto a USB stick, booted it up and installed Android directly on, on a PC in either in dual boot mode or without Windows. Mm. Yeah. This one's called the yeah, Nox Player and you can get that at bignox.com. B-I-G. Yeah, I looked it up. Yeah. N-O-X. That, that was a pretty big one. Now, Jace, keep going with another one, please. Microsoft's January and February security fixes for Intel's meltdown process of vulnerability open up an even worse security hole on Windows 7 PCs and server 2008 R2 boxes. This is according to researcher Ulf Frisk, who previously found glaring shortcomings in Apple's file vault disk encryption system. We're told Redmond's early meltdown fixes for 64-bit Windows 7 and server 2008 R2 left a crucial kernel memory table readable and writable for normal user processes. This in turn means any malware on those vulnerable machines or any logged in user can manipulate the operating system's memory map, gain administrative level privileges and extract and modify any information in RAM. Fingers crossed your system isn't among those also that still suffer networking woes caused by the March security patches. Microsoft security patches this month Break static IP address and VNIC settings on select installations, knocking unlucky virtual machines, servers, and clients offline. 
Hmm. It's a bit of a worry, they, that old uh, meltdown and whatnot. But uh, I'm sure they're trying mm. to fix it. I'm not sure that it's going to really... I don't know. I suppose if it gets exploited, you know, you know, uh, rapidly or whatever, if there's uh, large exploits or little scripts running and handed around that would exploit the the, the vulnerabilities, yeah, well, that's when it gets bad. But uh, let's just hope they get it sorted anyway. Yeah. Uh, look, just quickly, Telstra turns on 5G over Wi-Fi for Gold Coast. Uh, they, 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 Sweet. You're going to try it out? Well, there's no 5G compatible smartphones on the market yet. So obviously that that uh, that's going to go really fast. That network, the telco said it would be using. No one's there. <laughs> that's right. The telco said it would be using connectivity via its new five G innovation center to power a series of Wi Fi hotspots around Southport on the Gold Coast. Telstra said by connecting the five G backhaul and infrastructure in the Southport Exchange to a standard Wi Fi access point, people could use the tech on their existing devices. Telstra will meanwhile be evaluating the network, and five G hotspots will be open to anyone in the vicinity. For for free with a download limit of 10 gig per day per device mm. so uh wacky do i think i got a picture of not really 5g but there you go um yeah. it's nice isn't it <laughs> 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 well yeah should i get that one or the other one no, but, uh, <laughs> that one <laughs> now here's something uh look i'll go over this one here this is something you can, I don't know, you've got nothing to do. You can have a go at this. 780 days in the life of a computer worm. Now, this is a story of a worm from the time it was coded and deployed onto the internet. It is. It says it's narrated by the worm in the first person. I couldn't actually find the, like, narrated to me means spoken, like audible. I couldn't find any audible spoken things to listen to. So I'm guessing that when they say narrated, it's just, you read it but anyway it starts off with uh like a little diary i guess so zero day first chapter zero day and it says according to abe my programmer i am a worm he named me libby after kate libby from the movie hackers his previous projects have been named ginger trinity and angela then (laughs) day one Abe is gleeful at the prospect of unleashing me onto the world. I have to scan all devices I come across on my journeys. Whenever I find a machine running Windows version prior to Windows 8, I must connect via a vulnerable anonymous login and null session and then use the null session to send commands to Abe's master server, which downloads a payload. It sounds quite boring. And then it just goes on and on and on. And day 779, earlier today... I was deep scanning an unusual device. It turns out that it was under the protection of some kind of unified threat de- detection platform that orchestrated responses and quarantined me into the sandbox. I'm in cyber hell and I'm un- unable to continue my journey. I heard one of the researchers say they'll share my traits on IOCs on OTX. Day 780, terminated. So there you go. That's a bit of, bit of fun. <laughs> There's more days in the middle, obviously. I'm not going to read the whole... 770 <laughs> days, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So if you want to get that link, uh, where it, you can probably just search for 780 days in the life of a computer worm, or uh, you can go to the show notes at uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast, and you'll be able to get the show notes and leave us a voice message while you're there. That'd be good. Uh, now, anyone got anything they want to say about that? I know we're pushing, no, pushing that's through. Cool. Them. Yep. Uh, I will mention I found that website though. It's nerveware.com. What's on that? Nerveware. That's Android it's, emulator. It's not an emulator. It's um, it's Chrome OS basically. Uh, so oh, so right. it's and Linux. you can inst- you can install it. Nerveware. Any uh, sorry, neverware. Sorry, not nerveware. My entire n e v e r w a r e dot com. N e v. N e v e r. Hang on. N-E-V-E-R-W-A-R-E. They got the idea of that from Neil Gaiman's story, Neverwhere. Yeah. So uh, Cloud Ready is, is, it's called Cloud Ready, there you go. Cloud Ready is based on Google's Chromium OS, the open source architecture hmm. as Chrome OS. So you can install that directly on your computer and you've got basically Google Android. So you can install right. all the apps from the App Store and all that sort of stuff and you don't need Windows on there or you can just boot it from a USB stick and not have it affect your Windows at all. So just put on a USB stick, load it up, and run it. When you're finished, go back to Windows. But it says try it for free. So does that mean that they're going to ask you for some money? No, there's no money involved. Free trial. I, I, I tried it out. I, I think they're 
I, I think there may have been a fee for support or something, but I don't think the actual operating system was. Mm. Okay. I can't, I can't remember. It was a little while ago since I've tried it, but it did. It worked quite well. Just chucked it on a USB and booted it up, and there was there was uh, Chrome OS. Nice. But I didn't. I didn't kind of. I didn't connect it to my Google account or anything. I just had to tinker with it, and then I didn't. I didn't go that far into it. Mm. Now, but it was easy because it's just an installer. Download the installer and run it. And it just sets That's up USB good. for you. Same as that mm. uh, Knox or whatever it was, Knox thingy, Bobber. Now, uh, Jay, just quickly, what's that Microsoft Xbox Skype thing story that you had? Ah, better watch out if you're playing Xbox, get ticked and cuss. Microsoft might ban you for offensive language. If they do, then say bye bye to your Xbox Gold membership and any Microsoft account balances. Or if you and a significant other are getting hot and heavy via Skype, you better watch your language and any nudity because that too can get you banned. The ban hammer could also fall if Cortana is listening at the wrong moment or if documents and files hosted on Microsoft services violate Microsoft's amended terms. The changes are part of new Microsoft Terms of Agreements agreement, Terms and Services Agreement are going to affect on May 1 and cover a plethora of Microsoft services. Mm. So there's nudity on Xbox Live, is there? On Skype. <laughs> on Skype. I thought yes. you said it was Xbox Live. I'm thinking, geez, they're having fun playing those games. Look, there's a, a part of that article here where it goes on that says what qualifies as offensive language. And I guess these days, this is pretty right. Offensive language is fairly vague. Offensive to whom? What my granny might find offensive and what I might find offensive could be different. I'm sure they would be. But how would Microsoft even know if you had truly been offensive? So, they, I was just going to say that. What are they listening into your conversations? Well, they said they weren't. Yeah, yeah but that's what they they're saying. You that, might get reported by so somebody else. Who you up for bad language and nudity? How do they mm. are they? You know, like well, I got a Skype and over long distance and and you know keep their relationships happier. That might sound horrible to some. It might to, yeah, well, quite to others. Few, you know, quite, why not? I mean, it's what it's mm. that's what videos for, isn't it? Well, I had it quite a few years ago. Now, maybe I don't know, ten, maybe ten years ago, or seven, eight, not whatever. Uh, I had uploaded some photos to OneDrive. And they just happened to be, you know, a couple of photos of the kids. And one photo there was the kids in the bath. And obviously, they don't wear clothes in the bath. And I got an email from Microsoft that said, you've got uh, child porn in your OneDrive. Take it out or we're going to close it. What are they you. looking for OneDrive for? I can understand that they would, might not like, they might not let you post that live on Facebook. But isn't your OneDrive supposed to be a private? Apparently not. And this is like See, that's eight years ago. That's exactly why I like having my my um, own cloud, as they call it, own cloud. That's what it's called. <laughs> own um, cloud. Because I know, yeah, well, that's what it's called. Haven't you ever heard of own cloud? Oh no, I thought you were saying it was your own. No, I haven't. It is my own. But have you ever yes. heard of it's it your own? So it's basically a cloud that you install on your own server. Or on your, your own. own ne- oh right, yes, yeah, I've heard of and those. Sort of, and that's what it's called. It's called own cloud, and I prefer it because I know that the the big brother's not watching. So, I mean, so, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not storing porn on there. If that's, <laughs> if that's any seasoning, I wouldn't have the space for it anyway. But it's the whole point of, mm. do you really feel private? It's, it's storing your stuff on big company servers. I mean, look at what Facebook's going through, mm. and look what you know, look what Google's been through in the past. You know, so this own cloud. That doesn't look too bad. Yeah, oh, it's own cloud. I think it's own cloud.org. It's it open source thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is that, is that dot, 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 dot org? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't look like the website, I remember. Yeah, so that looked, so what what's the what do you do there? Like it, obviously storage what and it says collaboration. So it's just like it having... does everything pretty much the same as as OneDrive, I suppose. No, oh, and right. you can yeah, you can run your own server and then you can I think it's got the plugins for is it what's that is it what's that open open source office uh, um open office uh, open office or, or this, libra Li, uh, libra or something libra, libra. office yeah libra office There's, i think it's got Star plugins office. for those and contacts mm. and oh, all those things yeah right yeah. uh okay so let's uh, i've just got one more story i want to get through uh just quickly i think uh, there could be a couple of others but you can go to this uh web page if you Keen to see what other yeah. else there was. But Uber brings a carpool service to Australia. Uber will bring its long-awaited carpooling service to Australia next week, offering passengers the opportunity to cost to share the cost of rides. 
So Uber will begin offering its Uber Pool service in Sydney Test Zone, which will span areas from Watson Bay to Leichhardt on the 3rd of April before expanding to other cities and suburbs. Uber Pool will allow customers to share their ride with other passengers by matching riders heading in the same direction. So that's probably a good idea. Uber we use something like great. that in the US. There's Uber X that we could take if you wanted to go by yourself, which costs more, or if you just got the normal Uber, your car would pick you up, and then if there was anyone heading in the same direction, uh, we got picked up at my motel, and then uh, they picked up a couple of girls and a guy who were heading to a party and dropped them off on the way to the restaurant we were going to and then dropped us off at the restaurant. So you end up sharing it between the two different parties. Yeah, yeah. So unlike the door-to-door service offered by the UberX, the car pooling service will require passengers to walk a short distance to and from the pickup uh, points. The service was first introduced in the US in 2014 and has since expanded to other markets, including Singapore and selected cities in France and Malaysia. So uh, mm. cool. That's all I've got. Uh, so Jay, you've got a couple of others. You want to get through them or just want to point everyone to the podcast page? What yeah, I can do? go through quickly. Yep. Google could owe Oracle Core billions of dollars for using Oracle-owned Java programming code in its Android operating system on mobile devices, an appeals court said, as the years-long feud between the two software giants draws to a near close. Google's use of Java shortcuts to develop Android went too far, and it was a violation of Oracle's copyrights, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit ruled Tuesday. The case, first filed in 2010, was remanded to a federal court in California to determine how much Alphabet Inc. unit should pay. Oracle had been seeking $8.8 billion, though that number could grow. Google expressed disappointment and said it's considering its next steps in the case. The dispute, which would have far-reaching implications for the entire software industry, has divided Silicon Valley for years between those who develop good code that makes software steps function and those who develop software programs and say their fair use of the code is an exception to copyright law. It's a momentous decision on the issue of fair use. Lawyer Mark Schoenfeld of Burns and Levinson in Boston, who's been following the case and isn't involved. It's very, very important for the software industry. I think it's going to go to the Supreme Court because the Federal Circuit has made a very controversial decision. I think uh, that was originally apparently going for like nine years or something, I read. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, first filed in 2010. Uh, and I think it was also, uh, it's in the appeals court because a jury verdict came down in favour of Google. And so Oracle went to the appeal court and apparently the yeah. appeal court can just dismiss a jury verdict ruling. So oh, yeah. that's yeah. a bit crazy i thought once you go to a jury i thought well hmm. that was it <laughs> yeah but apparently you can go to these appeal courts and uh just get the judge one judge to go yeah those nine people didn't know what they were talking about yeah. <laughs> let's get rid of it next yeah. <laughs> all right uh, any more jace that's it for me cool uh jordan do you have any more you want to tell us about how's your yeah, edge um, going was... good oh i'm i've got an edge going at the same time actually but i've only got one tab open in it Right. Good it's stuff. frustrating Microsoft get your act together that's the one thing I, 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 I don't mind Microsoft and I like Windows but that one thing with, with Edge annoys me it's alright sometimes and then I'll do an update and it'll go bung again and then they'll fix it and it'll go bung again now you know, you know Edge. That, you know, Paul. and they say Edge is supposed to be one of the most secure browsers and that <laughs> might be also the most annoying ones at times now you know Paul that, uh, that emailed us through the week he, he also loves Microsoft, and he said he is totally Microsoft. So him and you are little Microsoft buddies, I think. That's I the... am totally Microsoft to an extent, but there's, there's, there's times when you've got to be realistic. Like, for example, tonight, I have to use Google. Chrome. Seek adventure. Be, be brave. Microsoft shouldn't be leaving me in the, in the middle of a podcast with a computer that's crashing because Edge is taking up you know, all of my system resources. It just shouldn't happen. Now, you are, you, are you blaming Microsoft or are you blaming that 20 cent uh, parallel port extension card? Hey. <laughs> oh, the thing I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it's definitely, it's, it's edge definitely right. in this, this scenario because it's happened It's happened before, hmm. you know, and it get, like I said, it gets better and then it goes bad again. And then, like I said, you can open the task manager and have a look at it hogging your, your system. Yeah, that's got nothing. That's got nothing to do with anything. I wouldn't think that had hardware. That's to do with it hogging your system, and it shouldn't be. Mm. I did have one quick story, though. Speaking, it was um, not really a story. It was just a, a headline. I thought it was quite funny, and I'd mention it. 
Um, I switched between iPhone and Android whenever I want without losing anything. Oh. Here's a very simple way to do it. And I'm not going to go into detail, but the answer is um, get a Google account. Right. <laughs> all your contacts and all your uh, photos and everything in Google. And then you can, you can go That's back to it. You I've been swapping between mm, iPhone yep. and Android for ages, no problem. Yeah. It says here, don't believe the hype. Switching between iPhone and Android is quite easy. I should know. I've been writing about technology for the past five years and I've switched among dozens of different smartphones in that time, whether I'm using an iPhone or an Android phone, anything. You just have to rebuy all your apps. Yeah, that's the only yeah. problem. Yeah, well, if you've bought them all once on google they'll work on any phone you sign into your google account with anyway so google apps yeah but other apps that on ios are on both platforms but you can't once you buy it on the iphone then you switch to android you have to buy it again hmm. really yeah. yeah oh that sucks yeah yeah <laughs> it's same with your, oh. your music well, it says here I, it says here i never lose a contact and my calendar switch seamlessly yep yeah that's Even right. my notes come with me yeah yeah, yeah. so anything in google yeah, anything in mm. Google, but if you downloaded a song through iTunes, or if you downloaded a song or bought a song through Apple Music, that's it. <laughs> you finished. But um, you got to go play it through Apple. But yes, uh, so right. you, so you can't yeah. If you buy like a Twitter, if you buy like a Twitter app, Twitterific for iPhone, and then you switch to Android, you have to pay the developer again for that app again. You don't get it free on a mm. new platform. Yeah, that's right. But other than that, I'm, I'm I'm confused. Well, you wouldn't be using that Twitter app unless you were on an iPhone. If it's from the Apple Store, would you? But they no, can they put them with... on both platforms. Yeah, cross. yeah. So, but once you buy the that app, doesn't it stay in your iTunes account? It does, so but there's no iTunes on Android. If you switch to Android and throw your iTunes in the bin or sell it, your iPhone. No, but if you then decide you want to go back from Google, you can back go back, back again and it'll still be there. But if you're staying on Android. There. You still have to buy two copies of the app. That's oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you still yeah. got to buy mm. two copies of the app. So the apps, in that sense, yes, you have got to buy two copies. But if you've bought them all over the years, like I've got, my my kids are all on iTunes. I was on iTunes before they were. There's a lot of apps on there that I've still got that my wife and kids use. But I've been on Android with my kids' tablets and stuff like that for years, and we've got probably all the same apps there as well. Yeah, so and Google switching does switching to between two. It's just it's just as easy and we don't use google for um actually i don't use google for my contacts i use um i use microsoft and that's mm. the same thing i use the just the normal hotmail email and you can switch between yeah devices or platforms devices with that as well as long as you've got that third party com set of contacts and, yeah and google yeah. does the family sharing as well so that's good yeah so um, yep. yeah so it's all good uh, yeah, so does so does, so does windows don't they uh, yes, I guess so. There's nothing in the Windows right. Store that I've ever bothered to want enough to try and then try How long has it been since you've been in the Windows Store? It's been a while since I've been in there. Oh, it's, oh I've got hiccups. It's no good. It's pus. That's why no one goes there. I can't see why they don't work it out. How long has it been since you've been there? Uh, it's probably been probably a little while, but there's nothing there. Because it's been ages for me. I mean, I'm, running, I'm on a Windows computer and I still never look. Yeah, but I'm just curious how long it's been. If you say it's pus, a lot of people say it's pus, but they're going on, you know, old information. Ah, oh, no, it's still Sorry. pus. Maybe pus. Is it? <laughs> pus. I'll have a look, have a look after the it. show, and we'll have, have a look and have, have a look and get back to we'll, get back to us. We'll be pulled back next week. All right. Speaking of next Let week, if it's any good in there. Yes. Speaking of next week, that's where we're going to see you next time because uh, if you want the show notes look there you go there's our show notes on the web page aussietechheads.com forward slash podcast just follow the link to the show notes uh, leave us a voice message uh, check out ATH web hosting check out the Aussie Tech Radio and most importantly check out the Aussie Tech Crypto hey Jace going gangbusters yep. and it's really new episodes every week from Jason and Will and sometimes a special guests so yeah going great guns so that's good 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 stuff. Congratulations and well done. Okay, that's about it. So thanks for coming in, Jace. Been a pleasure no once again. Catch you again next time. Thanks, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Pleasure talking yes. to you. And uh, no worries. Thank you. And thanks for downloading, listening, and whatnot. Go the Sharkies and happy Easter, everyone. Bye bye. See you next happy week. Happy Easter.